Hi guys. Match. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so that question is a question that is going to be very difficult to unpack because there are many angles that we can tackle this question for, from, right? How exactly do we grow our social media channel? Um, let me share with you a few thinking points, a few factors to consider when you want to grow your following on social media. This is irregardless of whether it's for your own personal brand, it's for a society, an organization, a club, a business. These are some things that we look at. So maybe you guys can write this down and, and reflect on it a little bit, all right? So your technical ability when it comes to social media is very important, whether it's things like Facebook ads, uh, knowing your PPC advertising, your SEO, your SEM, all that is important, yes. But more important than that is the fundamental understanding of what social media is and how it works. So a few things that I share with my clients when we have meetings and they ask us this exact question, how do we grow our social media world, right? Here's a few things that I tell them. Number one, you need to know exactly why you are using a specific social media channel. There is a vast difference between Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, Tumblr, Pinterest. There is a difference between all the social media channels. You need to understand why exactly you are on a specific channel? Why are you on Instagram? Why are you on Facebook? Why are you not on LinkedIn? You need to know the answer to these questions. Some things to consider um, is the type of content. For example, on Instagram and Facebook, the type of content that goes up is different, right? Uh, on Instagram, it's mostly visual. We use pictures. And then now with IGTV and IG stories, there's a bit of video element in there as well. On LinkedIn, right now, trending Topics are short form articles that do really, that thing, that kind of content does really well on LinkedIn. So that's the first thing to consider, right? What kind of content you're creating? What kind of content you're putting up out there on these social media channels? Number two, very, very important is your audience. Who are you trying to target? If you are on LinkedIn, you are trying to connect to executives, people who are in the business industry, C-level executives. If you're on Instagram, you're trying to target a younger audience. We are talking about primary, secondary, college, university, young working adults. They are primarily on Instagram. And on Facebook, it's a whole mix of that, but mostly on the more uh, young working adult and upward demographic. So whichever social media channel that you choose to spend your time on, pick the two that you are going to dedicate your effort and your focus to and make sure you understand the exact reason why you are there. You need to have a strategy. Don't jump into tactics without having a strategy. Your strategy is your overall idea of why you're on social media. What's your goal? What are you trying to do? And then use your tactics, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, to help you achieve your goals. That is number one. And uh, the second thing, which is very, very important, the word social media. Everybody understands the media part, but don't forget the social part. When you are on social media and you want to grow your following, you need to be interacting, you need to be engaging with people. So as a service organization, as, as a road director, you have a club page, right? You need to be engaging with other NGOs, other stakeholders, people that might be interested in your service, people that could benefit from your service, other potential partners, people who you think see the value and could benefit the, from the value of a road track club. You need to be actively engaging with these people on a consistent basis online. It's not just enough to keep on posting content and then you hope and you cross your fingers, oh, maybe my page is going to grow now. You need to remember the social aspect in social media. So that's a good starting place that I would recommend everybody to sit on and reflect on a bit and use that to guide your social media efforts. Back to you, Mel. All right, uh, we shall pass this to Terence. Hi, Terence, you there? Yes, I'm here, I'm here now. Yes. Okay, I think it's actually great to uh, hear the uh, sharing from Raj, right? Because many people realize there are a lot of social media platforms right now. There's Facebook, Instagram, right down to TikTok, right? So many platforms, which one to choose? I think one of the key takeaways from Raj is you must actually know who you are targeting 
if not your your message will be everywhere right from a to z so to have a targeted targeted mark, marketing to the demographic the market that you want to reach out to if we are talking about road track club i think for most of you we are talking about how to attract more members more volunteers more donors and even the media attention so this is what we are looking at so i think i would like to uh, to talk to JJ instead this round, right? So I'm aware that JJ has over 200,000 views on YouTube. Let's just say today you are starting from zero. Based on the number of platforms that you have today, which one would you choose to grow your following and why? And how will you do it differently? JJ? Okay. Uh, thank you, Terence. Uh, to answer that question, basically, um just want to go a bit back in time with the history. So the YouTube video that I actually had uh, that has more than 2,000, no, 200,000 overviews was actually one of the first videos that I've ever posted. And back then, uh, I mean, from back then, I didn't really actually have an idea like how I actually wanted or what I actually expected by posting this video on YouTube. It was just something that I did for fun at the time. Uh, but looking back and, uh, you know, understanding it now, when you look back at it, um, where you choose to put your content, it, uh, I think Raj has explained it just now also. It depends on uh, what actually, you know, like for my case, I, I sing covers, I'm more of a music kind of guy, so uh, I'm not as knowledgeable in the, you know, the very specifics, the details on how social media works. Uh, but what I know is uh, you have to select the right uh, platform uh, to portray whatever it is that you want to portray. So for my case, it is music. So uh, I think it is quite easy for you to imagine, like if you want to post uh, music related stuff you have various different platforms if you want just music then you have soundcloud uh, if you want music plus video uh, then you have youtube uh, but nowadays you have other things as well uh, depending on where you want to expand that influence the influence that you want like for my case right now i'm actually investing more time into uh, the chinese market mainland china so there you have uh, I'm, I suppose everyone knows TikTok, but TikTok is actually like the international version. Uh, there is a specific China only region of TikTok uh, in Chinese that's called Douyin. So basically it's the Chinese TikTok. So uh, I suppose like for my case, uh, I know clearly what I want. I want to focus because my music is mainly Chinese music and my songs are written in Chinese. So I will want to target the Chinese audience and that's where I decided that uh, the Chinese TikTok is the way to go. So uh, similarly, you can apply that same principle. It's very, actually quite simple. You have to know exactly where, who it is you want to target. And like Raj has explained just now, each uh, social media platform is different. It has their own demographics, you know, who are the majority of people that are using uh, like for my case, TikTok in China is used primarily by people in China, which works for my uh, intentions because I want to target the Chinese audience. Uh, similarly, if you're going for a more broad, uh, a more broad, like in Malaysia specifically, uh, I, I, what I have found out when uh, searching for information on demographics is that Facebook is the most broad in terms of demographics. There are young people using it, there are old people using it, there are every, there's everything in between, so it's the most general platform there is. Or uh, Instagram is the one that trends toward the younger side. You have more of uh, the students, college students, secondary school students, and I think a lot of uh, young children nowadays are already starting, you know, everyone already has phones and they're already very active on social media, so Instagram is the Instagram is the uh, platform for the younger side. So yeah, I guess uh, basically to summarize it is 
you have to know exactly what you want and then based on that you decide which platform you want to go you know understand which what are the strengths of each platform and then you analyze that and you decide which one you want to invest your time and efforts into okay uh, i hope that answers the question thank you uh passing back to terence thank you jj for the uh sharing right so i think again i think what we receive is we must know who we are trying to reach out to and what kind of tools that we must use that is uh, suitable for it. So let's talk about something about membership. Right? This is something that is a concern for many of the clubs. What keeps the clubs alive, right? Membership. If we are talking about road track for the uh, benefit of our guests, road track is currently for anyone that is from 18 years old to 30 years old, but we are extending the age limit up to probably 35 or 40 years old. So if today you are going to target such an age group, which social media do you think rotor actors should put their attention on? I mean, I can see a lot of them are on Facebook, on Instagram. Should they also consider more video content, for example, YouTube, and maybe even try out TikTok? What do you think, Rush? That's a, that's a great question, Terence. So firstly, let's go back to our target market, 18 to 30, 35 years old. So right off the top of my mind, I'm asking myself, okay, in terms of demographic, I already know the age. Now let's try to understand this demographic a bit better. What's their personality like? What do they like to do? What is their typical day like? How's their weekend like? What kind of shows do they watch? I try to get into the minds of my target consumer, right? Uh, or my target club member that I want to approach. And right off the bat, LinkedIn is the first place that comes to my mind because Rotaract is a service-based organization. So if you really want to focus on people who you know can recognize the value that a Rotaract club has, my bet would be LinkedIn is a good place because they, they are all business-minded people. They are entrepreneurial. They know what's going on around the world. They live for something larger than themselves. They understand the value of things. So LinkedIn would be a great place to start. Um, of course, Instagram is a great place as well. Younger target market, uh, more entertainment skewed, but there's also a demographic, a community of people on Instagram who are very passionate about social, social change and uh, social activity as well. So these are the two places. If I were you know, running my own road track club or if I were part of a marketing team for a road track club, I would be actively focusing my efforts on LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, those are the channels that I would look at. And the reason I, I, I don't say Facebook is because you guys have to understand something about social media, right? There's something called an algorithm. An algorithm is, to put it very simply, a uh, hidden system in how social media works. And sometimes this algorithm can work against your favor. So in order to effectively grow on these platforms, you need to understand the algorithm. And as of right now, the algorithm on LinkedIn is a bit more forgiving in the sense that when you post content, it reaches out to a wider audience easier. There's all reason behind that, but we won't dive into that today. Uh, today, but if you're looking for organic growth, LinkedIn is a good place and I think it really matches your target demographic really well. A um, few other things to consider, like Terence, you asked about video, right? How should we use video marketing and all that? I personally feel video marketing is, is uh, one of the easiest ways to communicate with people. Not only can you communicate a message much more clearly, it's much more engaging and you can build a relationship much more easier when you have a video connection with someone. They can visually see what Rotrack can offer. So yes, if you have the resources, the skill and the talent and the time to shoot videos, go for it. And videos do generally well on any platform. And one last point before I pass it back to you, Terence. Uh, Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to, to social media and no matter whatever platform you use, the frequency of posting is very, very important. I had an acquaintance who grew 10,000 followers on his Instagram in a span of two weeks. In two weeks, he grew by 10,000 followers and he was posting three to five times a day. 
because the algorithm rewards you if you post frequently. When you post frequently, the algorithm will say, okay, look, this person is posting frequently. They're bringing value to my platform. Let me push out this content to more people. So yeah, the frequency is very important as well. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I think, Terrence. Uh, back to you. I think there is a lot of gems that we can actually pick up from Rush, right? I think what is interesting is the final publish is the frequency of posting. Because there is this, not to say there is this norm, but there is definitely this habit that I see among not just road track clubs, right? But many social media accounts where they try not to, not to post too frequent. They are trying to post like the best highlight photo of the day. And then they just wait for it to accumulate the likes, the comments. So instead of posting like three, four, five times a day. So what do you think about this, JJ? Hi. Uh, okay. So um, I think I agree very much with what Raj says uh, with the frequency thing. So uh, a similar uh, thing that we try to keep up for my case, like when I do post videos in uh, the China TikTok in Douyin, uh, I do work with a uh, a company that manages, you know, it's like a management company for my uh, for my channel as well. So uh, the frequency is very important. So it's important to be frequent and consistent. I would say so. Um, you have to post a specific number you have to have a target basically a specific number of videos how many uh, that you want to post within a week like for my case i try to aim for at least three to four videos a week uh, that does increase your workload but i guess that's the point right so the more you work the more rewards you get uh, so from that uh the frequency and the consistency you you set that target you know for my case three to four videos a week and you have to meet that target consistently uh in order to keep that traffic going because uh the algorithm is there as raj has mentioned so uh, each platform has a different way of doing things but generally speaking if you slack uh that's generally not going to help your uh, uh your traffic onto your social media accounts and whatnot uh, and uh, yes, I believe uh, as Terence has uh, pointed out just now, there has this, there's this other opposite side of thinking, saying that you know, uh, you don't want to post too much. You only want to post uh, the best things that you have. L let it be, you know. Don't post like too many in a day or anything like that. I don't think there is a problem of posting too much in a day. Uh, but there still has to be like a balance. If you post too much, uh, if you post things that are not really, uh, the quality has to be there. I think the basic quality has to be there. It doesn't always have to be like, okay, it has to be like the best, the nicest thing Then only I will post. Uh, uh, basically, there is a balance that you have to catch there, like the quality of your content, the um, you know the image that you're trying to portray also it, it, it if you're like a uh, if let's say your your main point of the channel is music then you're mostly posting about music stuff but sometimes you can also vary that uh, how do you call it create some variety in your posts maybe you can uh, try something else try something different like instead of just posting the same types of things, Let, let's say covering other people's songs. For my case, I can do something different and uh, uh, I can do mashups instead of just plain covers. You know, that's a uh, different, you know, when you go to YouTube channels, they have different playlists inside those channels where each is a unique program or a unique thing that they do. It's, uh, you know, and that helps them to post more frequently as well because they have more different things to post and they can post it uh, in between maybe in the same day or uh, once a day but different things you know of course if you post too much of the same thing and people don't see the uh, 
you know people will get bored of uh, the same things eventually so that's one thing uh, that you may have to consider when you're talking about posting frequently so hold on something wrong my mind okay so uh yeah i guess my point is there so um there has to be a balance lah, between posting frequently posting not frequently uh what you what you want your image to be uh what kind of things that you want to portray you have to be really sure of that and uh yeah i guess uh that's it for me thank you very much i hope that answers your questions back to you terence Thank you, JJ. I think, I hope that answers uh, your query, right, Joshua? Uh, as in, if we continuously post the same thing, wouldn't it be annoying to our followers? I think at the end of the day, like what JJ said, right, the uh, quality needs to be there. There must be a value, there must be a message. And most importantly, I think there, could, there should be a variety. If we look at into, uh, say, Instagram accounts of JJ or even uh, Raj Mahal, right, Raj? You can see that they alternate, right? Sometimes they have pictures, sometimes they have uh, like some jokes, sometimes they have videos. And the next question I would like to, uh, just to follow up on what JJ has been speaking, right? So I would like to uh, have this one for Rush, right? So just now you mentioned about algorithm. I do realize that a lot of uh, clubs, a lot of social media users, they, they, they post on their feed, right? Some, and now they know that there is something called a story and they post on their story. They know that the reach is higher and things like that. But I feel like a lot of people are not trying the new features. Okay. For example, I think, uh, let's say for your own Instagram account, right? I think you probably have tried out IGTV. You probably have tried out IG Live. How rewarding are these new features? And even on Facebook nowadays, we see a lot of uh, live streams. How effective are all these? What do you think, Rush? That's, a, that's an excellent question, Terence. So coming back to the topic of algorithm, whenever any new social media platform launches a new feature, for example, when Instagram launches IG Live, whenever any social media platform launches a new feature, try your very best to incorporate this feature into your marketing. Because what actually happens is the algorithm is going to reward you for trying this new feature. It's a new feature. They want to market it more. If you do me a favor and use it to help me market this new feature, I'm going to get your video viewed by more people. That, that is the, the simple understanding behind it. So IG Live and IGTV is one of the more recent features that Instagram specifically has rolled out. Not that recent, but it's one of the newer ones. Uh, amongst others. So naturally, naturally, the organic reach, organic reach meaning how many people might stumble across your postings by accident or how many people following you will see your post. That rate will be higher than usual if you use more recent features. Of course, there is more on the algorithm side and the more technical side. I, I don't want you all to overly worry about that try to figure out how you can create high quality relevant content and what do i mean by high quality relevant content right it's a, it's a it's a buzzword that everybody in the world will use so oh, make sure you make relevant relevant high quality high quality what exactly does that mean so how i phrase it high quality relevant relatable content is content that can invoke emotion with your follower or your potential follower on social media. For example, someone like JJ, he's an amazing singer, right? So when he sings and when he make, makes covers online, people scrolling through, they look at him and they're like, wow, look at this guy, he's such a good singer. I feel relaxed, I feel happy, I feel nostalgic when I listen to his music. So I find that value and I follow him because of that. I follow a lot of people making skits on Instagram, right? All this X, Viners, people used to use Vine, the social media, and uh, on social media, and then they make these little skits or short videos. I follow them because I enjoy that kind of content. It makes me laugh, and it makes me reflect on everyday situations. So that's the value that I find in their content. 
So as a Rotaract club, as a service organization, uh, one thing which I feel is very important for you to think of is that, yes, indeed, you guys are trying to inculcate a lot of good values in people. You're trying to convey the message that Rotaract is a good place to be because we uphold a lot of values and we try to help people's lives improve. Now, let me share an experience with a client that I had and, and maybe I'll try to draw an analogy between these two things, right? I'll try to show you guys the similarity between these two things. Um, I had a client who had a car dealership and had an Instagram page and the only thing that they posted on their Instagram page was these little ads saying, okay, today we got this sale for this special car. It's going for 10,000 ringgit secondhand. And then their next post is this car. We are selling this thing. And then every single post is just a promotional post trying to sell something. So as a person following their page, the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, these people are just trying to sell me something. They're not trying to build a relationship with me. How can I trust them if I know they're only trying to sell me something? So this is a trap that we should try to avoid when we are on social media. Yes, we are upholding good values. We are doing really good things for the community around us. But how can we communicate this in a way that resonates with people? That is the challenge that we need to solve as a road track club in order to, to spur our following and to see some sort of growth on social media. Back to you, Terrence. Okay, yes, thank you for the, uh, the feedback, right, and the uh, sharing of how your, I think the examples are important, because a lot of people, they may not be as adept in social media, but if you give them an example, what do you mean by quality, by post? There's always this debate of whether we want to go for quantity, or what does it mean, right? And, and the next question I think we want to ask is, uh, I've been seeing a lot of your feedback over here, right? Uh, uh, obvious, Brandon, Somic, Crystal. All of you have been a sondry. All of you have been posting like, what is your goal for public image, right? Some of you saying that you want to build a certain brand. You want to build up your followers. But I think what happens is that we, we, we kind of ignore that the reason why we cannot just be on one social media platform is because any one platform could only cater to one specific uh, audience, if you like to put it that way. For example, you might attract your followers through Instagram, but it's unlikely you are able to attract donors from Instagram, for instance. Your key big donors, where do you get them from? So it seems that the media, your, your donors, your volunteers, your members, they could be more active on different platforms that you are not active on. So now here's the question, right, for JJ. There are so many platforms, too many platforms. And every year there is a new social media, right? Snapchat, then there is TikTok. How much is enough? People are overwhelmed, right? Like we can't spend our whole day, you know, just playing social media. I post this here, I post that here. I'm sure there are some apps that help you to synchronize your posting to like straight away blast out to all social media. But at the end of the day, if you look at the, um, for example, anything that you post on Instagram, the measurement could be different. For Facebook, it could be different. The video, vertical, horizontal, too much. What do you think, JJ? Any comments on this? Okay. Uh, thank you for the question, Terence. Uh, yeah, social media has been uh, something that has been growing since uh, I think in the early 2000s, I guess. Um, the first few, obviously, like the ones that have already died, like MySpace and stuff. And uh, after that, Facebook was the one that really kick-started the social media 
uh, craze, I guess, and it's still one of the most, still one of the most used social media platforms until today. Uh, so that's Facebook. And as you said, there are uh, many, many attempts later of uh, trying to launch a new social platform, like the more uh, along the way after Facebook, then we had, uh, we also had Twitter. I think Twitter was around the same time as Facebook. And then after that, there were the newer ones uh, that came into play. We had Instagram and then we had Snapchat. And then nowadays we have uh, a lot more, not just, you know, English based. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm tending to skew towards like the Chinese uh, market like, because, you know, uh, mainland China is a completely different thing. They have a completely different social media market, but uh, they follow the footsteps as well of uh, uh, those already established social media platforms like Facebook and all. So China now has like their own like Weibo and then TikTok, Douyin. you know, TikTok is like the biggest thing right now in China and it's starting to grow as well uh, in the, uh, around the rest of the world. So yes, uh, more and more platforms are starting to show and uh, as people who want to make use of that, you know, who want to uh, uh, gain a following on whichever social media platform that you're using, uh, over time you have to keep up, right? So uh, I believe uh, you can't possibly do everything. So I think it still comes down to the same uh, principle just now is you still have to be really clear which demographic you're trying to, you know, you're trying to attack, you know, which audience you're trying to attract, which, uh, which kinds of people that you're trying to engage with. So that would define how much focus you want to put in a specific social media platform. And I think that is still true until today. Uh, what has to change is that you have to uh, you have to still be always aware about the changes that actually happen to the demographics of the social media itself. So actually younger people, if you realize, have started moving away from Facebook to uh, things, uh, to other platforms like Instagram and Snapchat. Uh, so those are the things that you have to start taking into account as well because uh, when you were doing good on Facebook you know maybe three or five years ago it may be different today uh, I suppose uh, people have also you guys have also uh, had experiences following certain uh, content makers like let's say on YouTube and then uh, suddenly they announce, oh, I have a new Instagram account, please go and follow that. So these are the things that they have done to, uh, to try and keep up with the times, you know. There are new things constantly coming in and then based on the success of those new platforms, based on uh, what those new platforms target, you decide whether you want to jump in or not and how much effort and how much uh, time you want to spend in that new platform uh, yeah so I think in summary it all still comes down to the same thing you have to be sure on what you want to know what you have to do okay. thank you back to you Terence thank you JJ thank you for sharing and uh, right now we actually enter into our final session for today which is actually our live social media audit so we are going to share screen on some of the um, social media accounts and we try to get the feedback from our audience. So if you are watching this right now, right, you can also join us and open up those social media accounts and let's have a look and study together on where we can improve. Okay, for the benefit of the district, we would like to kickstart this part three, right, the final part, with our own district Facebook and Instagram page. Okay, let's uh, start straight away.
let's start with district. How about district? Okay, as uh, all of you can see right now, right on your screen in front of you is the uh, district Facebook page. So for our so for our guests, Raj and also JJ, you can uh, open it up as well. And uh, we can have a look on where is it that we need to improve, right? Are there any contact information that you didn't put in or we didn't reply the comments enough or we should, certain designs should be improved. Okay, let's hear from uh, Rush, shall we? All right. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yep. All good. All, right. All good. Awesome. Let me just take a quick look at yeah. Rotaract District 3300 Malaysia. So right off the bat, very nice Facebook cover image. The moment I look at, look at it, I know this is a community. This is a service organization that is doing some good work. So I like that. Um, about section is there as well. So I know there's a word limit for the about section. You might want to consider putting a short explanation of what road track exactly is, but that is, that is up to you, whether you want this to be a road track specific page, or is this going to be a page that is visible to the community or people who are interested in road track as well. All right. Then the next thing we look at, let's just jump to the about page. Okay. That's good. That's the link to your website here as well. Going back to the home page, let's look at your content real quick. So you're promoting a fundraising campaign, right? Right, so right now, I think uh, my initial take on this page is that it is very well, branded there is a lot of uh, how do i put this good promotional material on the facebook page you guys are talking about events that you'll have going on uh, you are sharing both digital virtual events what i would add on to what you guys are already doing is maybe add in a little more educational content for example there's one post here that you guys posted on June 1st, 10.37 p.m. You shared a post from Road Track Club of Central College, Penang. That's the post, right? So maybe try experimenting with a little bit more posting like this. Things that when people look at on Facebook, they're like, oh, okay, that's interesting. What, what is this about? Try experimenting a bit more with this kind of shareable content. When people take a look at it, they will share it so that your reach will be increased. That is what I would try with this Facebook page because right now it's promotional. That's great. You're sharing with people all the different activities that this specific road track club is up to, but maybe try sharing a bit more educational content as well. Maybe a quick overview of what exactly does your road track club do, or maybe talk about different social issues that the communities you guys are helping are facing. Things like that, educational content. You can try experimenting with that. I think that, that, that is actually a great point, right? I mean, educational infographics that people would like to look through. I think the same applies to uh, Instagram as well, where we have the carousel, you know, we, where people flip through all these uh, very nice graphics and they learn a thing or two. How about you, how about you JJ? Anything you want to uh, comment on the uh, Facebook page? Okay. So, um, uh, okay, one thing that is a little bit off topic that I would like to say is that uh, if you want to compare between, uh, this is my personal opinion, compare between like Facebook pages and Instagram pages. Uh, so, I think the way each uh, platform works when it comes to their pages is that Facebook is a more uh more it already has a rather uh well organized structure where you have your home page your about page 
and all of these different tabs linking to different places it's already very structured and you know the the look of the uh, page itself would look quite the same across uh, regardless of who makes who creates the page the only difference is that you know what you put into your description the content that you post but the layout already looks pretty much the same so it looks very uh, rigid across different pages uh, the difference in that when you go to an Instagram page maybe you can show that is that the uh, Instagram pages uh, they they also have a fixed layout of course but the the first thing that you realize is Instagram pages they show all of these because it's basically a photo and video centric platform so when you open up an Instagram page and you see the posts are all laid out you know in that uh, it's all you know the, the the main thing that the page shows are the pictures that you post right away they are laid out in this uh, grid manner three times three in the case when you view it on a laptop uh, if you go to the phone I think it's three times three as well so basically uh, the difference there uh, to point out is that you have to be more mindful uh, when it comes to Instagram pages on when people click into the page the look of the page the image that people see is more dependent on how you organize your post so I'm sure you have seen those Instagram pages of those uh, uh, those people who are more hipster-ish and you open up their page and see wow their posts the photos they all look like really uniform they're all edited using the same presets you know the color it looks pretty much uniform so there is a image there uh, compared to a Facebook page you see because it is a lot of text and it already looks quite uniform in terms of uh, how Facebook designed the page so that one is still okay so when you look at an Instagram page instead uh, if your pictures are all over the place meaning that uh, it looks it will look quite messy if let's say it depends on what you want on your page but what I personally find appealing is a page that is consistent like for in, in, in Instagram's case so um, Okay, that, that was the point that I wanted to point out. Uh, so back to the uh, Road Track District 3300 Facebook page. Uh, I personally think it is very well done already. Um, like the content recently, I think, I guess I have been following this page for quite some time myself. So recently, I think it has improved quite a lot in terms of uh, uh, first thing is the things that uh, Roadtrack has been posting onto this page it has become more diverse they started sharing more different things and I think it's also due to the recent MCO where people are mostly sitting at home and then uh, the Roadtrack team has really taken that into advantage the virtual side of things that people are actually uh, like the Roadtrack team has done a lot to host more virtual events instead and uh, overall I think the like all of these posts like the one that you're seeing on the screen right now the design looks very clean and modern and uh, I think for me it is already very well done uh, and uh, things that could improve I guess is uh, yeah I think like like Raj has mentioned just now some more educational content would be great I think right now what I see from this uh, from this page as well is is a lot more focus on what events that we're doing and uh, that's great and uh, but I think one thing that people might miss when they come in is they don't really see okay what exactly is road track you know we see a lot of posts of the events that we do uh, but at the about section I think we if we can scroll back to the top we can see that uh, we wrote what we wrote there is like road track is yeah has over 
a thousand road characters in 36 clubs uh, district wide I think we can expand on that so this just tells people the size of road track in the district we have a thousand over road tractors we have 36 active active clubs but it doesn't actually tell you what these thousand road tractors and 36 active clubs do so i think that can be improved upon to give people a better idea uh, what exactly is it that road track does as a uh, ngo as a community service club you know all of us road tractors we know what we do um, but you know when people actually come and visit this page they want to know what we do and we are not actually putting that out right away to let people understand really easily what it actually it is that we do so i think that's something in that uh, that can really help maybe uh, maybe a quick introduction video uh, maybe a short two to three minute video to explain what is road track and what we do slap it right there onto the pin post section but the first thing people click into when they see the page is that video introducing what road track is uh, what do we do in road track 3300 in malaysia and uh, that i think would really help yeah i would like to add on to jj's point which was yes. an excellent point and another alternative to the pinned post would be to use a video on your facebook cover as well that is another option uh, that you guys can try it as well so your facebook cover if you can scroll up terence uh instead of putting an image there there's also an option to use a video as well so that's something that uh, all the clubs present here could uh, experiment with and see what fits your facebook page better yeah okay great uh thank you for your feedback uh, jj and also rush just now there is a post that uh caught my attention right i've been seeing this uh fairly recent you know, just to address the uh, matter of the of the day, right? That is uh, happening. So there, there is always issues that um, perhaps the uh, people would expect row three or row track to have a response on. Whether it could be an issue on uh, homelessness, whether it's on clean water, whether it's on a deprived uh, community. So is this a good way to? share our message our statement if yes how can we improve it further should we put in graphics how do we respond to uh, matters of the day to show that we are in touch with what is happening in the society and we make our stand clear what do you think rush well um i think when it comes to issues that have a very serious impact on the world. For example, the recent cases, I'm sure we're all familiar with the Black Lives Matter movement in the US and the murder of George Floyd. At the end of the day, the message and what Rotaract stands for, that is the most important thing. However you choose to graphically present that, I think that has some merit as well. But however that you guys did it with this post by Rotary International is, is a great way. It's simple, easy for everyone to understand. Um, I, I don't know whether I, I understood your question correctly, Terence, but in terms of the presentation of it, what I'm seeing right here is perfect. It's professional, it's prompt, and it's easier for everybody to understand that Rotaract is standing alongside the victims of, of whatever that is going on. Um, across the world right now. So yeah, that's that's my, my opinions and thoughts on this. Thank you, Rush. I think we are running short of time, but uh, at the same time, we would like to have a quick look on our APRRC Facebook page. So without me telling you what is APRRC, when you open this page, do you understand what is it about? Do you know where to sign up? Are you interested to pursue further let's have a look the first thing i notice is that you haven't liked the page that errands this is actually not my account <laughs> well i'm sure your friend can like the page too come let me help you do that see lock it yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, there you go. 
One more new follower. JJ, would you like to start first? Okay. Um, well, personally, I'm actually one of the people who are looking, uh, managing this page uh, alongside with uh, with uh, with Mel. Uh, so oh, we are actually part of the organizing. Yeah, so there's a bias there. But still, I think uh, uh, to be fair, we haven't really done much recently uh, on the, this page because uh, hold on. Uh, because this is actually a, uh, a page to promote the Asia Pacific Regional Road Track Conference 2020, which was supposed to happen in September. And uh, we, the, the objective of this page was basically to uh, to promote this event and to get people to sign up and join, uh, specifically targeting people from actually all over the world, uh, specifically in the Asia Pacific countries that are active in road track. Uh, so unfortunately, COVID-19 hit and uh, we were not in a place to actually continue promoting an event, an international event. So the page has been quiet for quite a few months. And uh, so I think uh, during that downtime, we actually haven't really done much on this page itself. Uh, so, but actually what we could have been doing maybe was uh, to post more on the issues that we have, you know, like in response to COVID-19, maybe we can advise on how uh, people can stay safe at home and etc. you know, all these things just to keep the page uh, in motion, you know, to show that we are still constantly updating the page. Um, but if you're looking at the stuff that we have done before to promote the, uh, the, the conference itself, we have done quite a lot of things. So uh, like the one that you're showing here right now is actually a message from Mr. APRRC 2017, which is me. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So this is like a, uh, you know, what was it? Uh, a, a first person account from people who have attended, uh, APRRC in the previous year. So this was like, uh, a sharing, a post that shares what the people who have uh the shares what how does it the share the opinions of what the people think th those people who have previously went for aprc before you know to let people know what an exciting event this is and why you should sign up why you should go for the next one and uh these are the things that we have done uh, we have also uh went around to penang uh, because this ACP, this APRC is going to be in Penang, so we have went to Penang to shoot videos, uh, promotional videos, and we have done that as well. So there is a lot of there are a lot of different things that we have done and posted onto this page to keep it active, to have uh, to keep uh, to keep up with the variety of the stuff that we post as well. Uh, but again, uh, I think it is not really my place to really comment on this because. Uh, I will be biased, and uh, if there are places that can uh, see some improvement, I don't really see it unless you tell me. So I think maybe we can pass it to Raj to see what he thinks about this page. Yeah. Okay, great, great. I, I think, first of all, thank you for JJ for his uh, uh, revelation, right, that he's actually one of the person that manages the, the page. So he's kind of like revealing himself. So uh, we, we are kind of running short on time. So we would like to actually pick up an account from one of the clubs that join us today. Iman Chin. Iman, are you here? Let's look at a uh, road track club of Help Uni.
for those of you who are watching this, if you'd like to reach out to uh, either JJ or, or Rash, I will give them some time to uh, promote the accounts where you can reach out to them. Let's have a look at this account, Rotrack Club of Health University, Rush. What so, input do you have for them? So first of all, now it's my turn to be slightly biased because I'm from Health University. Oh, I was okay. from Health I don't University. know that. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. um, sure. Terrence, maybe we can scroll down slightly. Let's just take a look at no. some of the things they've been posting. Yeah. Such a small world. <laughs> Somehow everyone is related. Can we click on one of the images, maybe one of the group photos, to just take a look at the captions? Group photos, how about this one? Awesome, cool. Okay, so based on my, my initial observation of the page, the first question that I would ask any members of the Road Direct Club of Health University is, what is the purpose of your Instagram page? Is it to encourage more people to sign up to your club? Is it going to serve as an announcement board of sorts for your existing members? You need to be very clear with the purpose of your page, right? And whatever content that you post should reflect the purpose of your page. So as of right now, I'm getting the impression or the understanding that this page is acting as a community center of sorts for existing members of the Rotary Club in Health University. So whenever they want to know about the latest event or they want to look back on existing events, they can just scroll around the page and say, oh, hey, I was part of this event. Oh, I remember this time. It was really good. I had a great time and so on and so forth. But if I was a new student in Health University and I was figuring out which club to join and this Instagram page um, is created with the intention of trying to to encourage people to join the Zotrek Club, then maybe there are a few things that you can consider. Uh, maybe number one, in terms of the captions, let's try to be a bit more descriptive with the captions. You can explain what exactly was this event that you guys had. What did you guys do during this event? Who were the beneficiaries from this event? That's, uh, that's one thing that you guys could experiment or try it with. Um, also, we can also alternate between the kinds of content that you guys have. So it's good to have a bit of behind the scenes, right? You guys are probably uh, planning an event right now in this, in this picture, I hope. <laughs> um, maybe add in some videos, some behind the scenes, some live footage from your events to spice up the page a bit. Yeah, exactly. You see, like these kind of comments, try experimenting with these kind of comments because as a new person who is not too sure what the Road Track Club of Help Uni is doing, as I read this caption and I look through the photos, there's a carousel uh, post here, I'll be able to understand a little better what you guys are doing. So, so that's a good place that you guys can start off. And as mentioned by JJ, we at the start of the, of, uh, the, the webinar today, uh, your frequency and your consistency. If you guys have set a plan to post three times a week, make sure you follow that three time a week schedule. And that will really benefit you in terms of the algorithm and having a steady growth of people on your page. Um, I'm not too sure whether you guys are interacting with other people on social media, but if you already are, that's great. If you're not, something that you guys can also try as a strategy to grow this page even further, you know when each new semester starts in Health University, right? So just say there's an intake in June and in December. I don't know. So when June and December comes, just search for the hashtag help university on Instagram or look at the geotech help university. You'll have a whole bunch of new students who are tagging help university in their Instagram photos. Drop a comment on their page. Say, hi, welcome to help university. If you're looking for a club to join, check out our Instagram page. Welcome to help. So you, you, you don't forget that social aspect of social media and you get people to know about your club. Um, in a nice and friendly manner. So yeah, that's something for you guys to, uh, you know, hopefully think about. And I hope that gives you a bit of direction for your Instagram page. Yeah. Uh, I think back that, to you, that, those are great, great insights from you, Rush, uh, on uh, what to fix, right? In fact, I think I kind of like all those uh, in-action kind of uh, posting that they have. Once again, we are running short of time. But just for our sake of our guests, uh, like it's from another district, right? I will take on uh, your requests. Uh, 
Okay, let's have a look. Okay, JJ or Rush, all yours. What do you think? JJ, you want to go for this one, bro? Okay. Ah, oh, Road Track Club of Alex. How do you read that? Marriott? District yes, 2451, like Egypt. Okay, so this is something new. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so the first thing I like to point out as a road tractor from a road tractor point of view is that their logo is already a bit off because you're supposed to follow the uh, road track, road tree logo guidelines as uh, Terence has already pointed out uh, in the beginning. So there's this uh, guideline that the website itself allows you to generate your own club logo but from what we can see in their uh, profile picture this is not the logo that they're supposed to use uh, but what I find that's good is that they're okay let's see uh, you see they have these uh, stories put into what do you call it collections yeah, so I think that's really nice what they have done. So uh, basically, uh, they have uh, organized all of their stories into uh, categories. Uh, although I think they could do better in naming them. I'm not sure what IJB means. Uh, I'm not sure right away what twinning means. Uh, okay, I know what Ramadan means, but I'm Malaysian, so I'm supposed to know. <laughs> uh, 6 October session, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, something that they have to work on like what exactly is that session for but I like the whole idea of grouping all those uh, different events into uh, collections for their stories so that really helps when people come into their Instagram page they can see things that are going on right away uh, from this uh, road track page and I think uh, from what I see here they actually have IGTV as well at the middle like post IGTV and tag so did they actually can we click into that and see uh, if they've actually posted stuff on IGTV oh, okay. so, oh yeah they actually did they actually did so okay I have no idea how to read that <laughs> but it looks like it's something related to uh, helping people I can see two people carrying bags perhaps of uh, bags of supplies going to help uh, those in need so that's uh, I think okay wait a minute. yeah okay so this is a video from the uh, first glance uh, I can see Hold on. first glance I can see is uh, that this is actually something that they're doing uh, they're preparing meals and distributing it distributing it distributing it to the needy I can see uh, that's actually that's I think that's uh, kurma right so this must be something related to the Ramadan season so uh, so this is really good so people actually see uh, like I think this is something that uh, has been mentioned just now as well so uh, mentioned by Raj just now when he was uh, commenting on the previous page uh, so these videos are really really good to help people uh, visualize what the road track club what this road track club does to help people to help the community uh, because instead of just posting group photos you know all group photos at the end of the day they look kind of the same it's a group photo with a lot of people in it so you can tell there's a lot of people there doing something but you're not really sure what exactly it is that they're doing so posting these sorts of videos showcasing what exactly has been done during those uh, community service events really helps people understand uh, what really is going on that gives people a better picture instead of giving people the idea of you know just posting group photos people will see okay this club involves a lot of people but what exactly do they do so those videos really help how about you rush any any thoughts on this I think JJ summarized everything perfectly. I, I agree completely with his insights on this page. Okay, I think with this. Okay, we are back.
I think with this, we have actually come towards the uh, end of our session for today. I think let's have a quick recap on uh, what we have discussed. Or while wow, we still have 36 people with us. So at the beginning, we talk about the uh, role three brand guidelines, what is public image. And then we jump in into tackling the questions about social media strategies. We talk about if there is a quantity versus quality. We talk about the uh, algorithm. We talk about using new features. We talk about putting descriptions, make sure people understand what is uh, your club or your organization about when they visit your page. And to actually put behind the scenes into uh, our videos and in our sharing. Okay, with this, uh, perhaps we can have a final statement from uh, two of our guests before we pass it back to Melissa. JJ, do you have any final statement that you'd like to share with our guests today? Mm, okay, so um, thank you very much, everyone, for your time. I hope uh, my opinions and insights have been uh, helpful to you. Uh, I do apologize if I've said anything wrong uh, a, 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 along this uh, session. And uh, I think my summary to everyone is uh, just like what we have emphasized way back in the beginning of the session is to be crystal clear on what you want, to be, uh, to understand who you want to target and then you tailor your content with that target audience in mind and then the frequency of posting as well as the uh as well as sticking to that frequency you know being consistent being disciplined and uh, i i think those are basically the very simple yet fundamental steps in order to improve your uh, influence uh, of your social media pages to the communities. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. How about you, Rush? Anything you'd like to say for our guests today? To, to echo JJ's uh, statement, your strategy is very, very important. You have to know exactly why you're on a social media platform. Use your time wisely, right? Pick the social media channels that you know will deliver the best ROI to you. Um, Social media channels are your tactics. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn are your tactics, but they all have to relate to a certain strategy. Uh, number two, I know a lot of y'all have asked questions and we didn't get the time to actually answer all of them. So what I'm going to do is, um, if you guys have any questions in regards to social media or digital marketing, you can just send me a message on Instagram. My Instagram username is Raj Mahal Bro. It's R-A-J-M-A-H-A-L-B-R-O. Just drop me a DM. We'll have a chat. Feel free to ask me any questions that you guys have. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to catch up on some of the questions lah, that you guys have had here. Uh, thanks so much, Terrence and Melissa, for helping me. And I hope you guys picked up a thing or two from JJ and I today. Yep. Thank you, Rush. I think today has been a very generous sharing session by my brother Rush and also JJ, you know, on a Saturday, on the evening, you know, to join uh, all of us over here, you know, just to talk about social media and how to stay relevant. So make sure show them some love, you know, follow them on their Instagram account. I put put day for JJ is JJ.U94 and for Rush will be Rush Mahal Bro, right? Drop them a DM. And more important than that would be uh, if you all realize Joshua, our DR and Joshua actually posted something. That link, that Google form link is actually the link to a feedback form of this session. If you love what Raj, what JJ has been sharing this evening, if you feel that you gain some value from it, I urge you to go fill up the feedback form, give them some love, give, give them some five stars, right? Okay, so with this, uh, I would like to hand it back to Mal. Any final words you would like to uh, address to us all? All right. How is it, guys? Uh, I hope that it is very, very insightful and also very, very helpful for all of you here today. Thank you so much, Raj, and also JJ, and also Terrence uh, for joining us today. Uh, yeah, so I hope that you all gain like super valuable uh, in information to help you all 
throughout your Rotaract journey. Yeah. And also don't forget uh, if you want to promote any club uh, events, club projects, do actually uh, get in touch with me. I'm sure all of you have like my phone number by now. So you can actually tell me then I will actually post them into our district page. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you so much for joining again. Uh yeah. That's it for me. Thank you. Awesome, awesome.